In this module, we will talk about the level of significance. Level of significance provides the basis for the testing of hypothesis. In the process of statistical decision making, there are two types of error that can possibly occur. The type 1 error and type 2 error. Type 1 error is when we reject H0 when H0 is true. On the other hand, type 2 error is failing to reject H0 when H0 is false. The level of significance is the probability of committing type 1 error. It's also called the significance level, alpha error, or size of the test. So it is denoted by alpha, where alpha is the probability of committing type 1 error, which is the probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is true. Here in the pictures down there, we can notice that the shaded region is determined for alpha levels, for one-tailed test and two-tailed test where 1 minus alpha is considered to be as the level of confidence. So the probability of committing type 1 error is specified by the level of significance. If a high level of significance is selected, let's say 10% or 20%, in the statistical test, the probability of rejecting a null hypothesis increases. This means that a high significance level, the chance of committing type 1 error is high. Thus, in order to avoid or reduce the type 1 error, a fairly low level of significance is selected. Since alpha is called the level of significance, 1 minus alpha is called the level of confidence. This is extensively used in the interval estimation of parameters. The other important concept that is also related to the level of significance is the power of a test. Power of a test originates from the type 2 error. The type 2 error occurs when we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. It is denoted by beta, which is probability of committing type 2 error. Whereas the power of a test is equals to 1 minus beta. So 1 minus probability of committing type 2 error is the power of a test. So the power of a test is in the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. So the power is computed as 1 minus beta, and the power can be interpreted as the probability of correctly rejecting a false null hypothesis. One can increase the power of test, but for this, we can increase the effect size, which is the difference between the null and alternative values. One can increase the sample size. One can decrease the variability in the sample or increase the significance level of the test. All these four measures help us to increase the power of your test. But the problem is, one should find a fair exchange between the values of sample size, effect size, variability, and significance level. Unfair increase or decrease in any of these values will increase the chances of committing type 1 error or type 2 error, and it adversely affect the power of your test. So calculating power of test beforehand will help ensure if the sample size is large enough to identify the difference or to, to identify the effect we are interested in. Sometimes people try to measure the power of test after they have collected the data. We do call it post hoc power calculations, but they are not highly recommended.